Hey, welcome back to On Mission with Phillips Family Ministries. We've got Jenny Phillips here, and we're going to be discussing her journey through homeschooling, um, which is a, a big part of their lives that they've been convicted by God as a family to teach their children at home. And during this coronavirus, that's been become more and more popular. But some people may not be super familiar with it, so I thought I'd ask Jenny to do a, a quick kind of journey through their history and how God has blessed this time with them and their family and homeschooling. Um, I'll open this up in a brief word of prayer. Father, thank you for every way that you have blessed this family. Help us to glorify you through our time together. Help Jenny to glorify you as she educates her children. And may this be all to your glory for Philip's family ministries to proclaim the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Jenny, thanks for joining us again. Now, you have a, a scripture you want to start us off with? Yes, thank you, Justin, for, for providing us this opportunity. This is great. Um, yeah, I, I think that when you think of homeschooling, and you've been doing it for a while, this is a verse that, that comes to mind pretty quickly. Um, you shall teach them diligently to your children and, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by your way, when you lie down, when you rise up. Um, but And we talked about this earlier, but I, probably I should go back to the verses before that where, um, where it pro proclaims that the Lord our God <clears throat> Is the, is, is the one, and we should love him with all of our heart, soul, and mind, and with all of our strength. And, um, and so these are the words that we are commanded to teach to our children, to love the Lord our God with all their heart, souls, mind, strength. Everything that we do comes back to God. Absolutely. And, you know, I wanted to do a separate video for this. Uh, I've heard people make comments before that they're asked to give their testimony, and it's all about homeschooling. Mm -hmm. Well, no, our testimony is what the Lord Jesus Christ did to rescue a wicked sinner. Yeah. So these can be parts of our sanctification process, whether we... Yeah you know, discovered this doctrine or we, maybe we understood this principle or we were convicted to go do this. You know, Daniel and Jenny, their testimony isn't that they were called to be missionaries. That's a piece of their testimony. Right. It's God rescued wicked sinners and they want to let a bunch of more wicked sinners know what he's done for them. And this is just an outpouring of that. Homeschooling is an outpouring of that. Um, go ahead and give us a, a, an overview of your history and you know, with homeschooling of your children. So we've been homeschooling. This is our 26th year. So and we have seven kids. So this is our 26th year. And um, you're definitely a homeschool family, though, because everybody knows homeschool families have to have at least half a dozen kids, right? No. <laughs> no, that's, I'm just kidding. We're a homeschool family too, and we have two kids, yes. so there is no limit. But there, there is are a, a lot of pre there is a stereotype yes, that homeschool families do have a lot of kids, and you guys, yes. there's a reason there's stereotypes, friends, because it happens a lot. But yeah. anyway, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, Jenny. That is funny you bring up stereotypes because sometimes people will meet our kids and interact with our kids in different like work situations and then they'll come back later and they'll say, wow, I didn't know you were homeschooled. You're not too weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think that the, especially with Corona and everything, the whole stereotype of homeschooling is, is changing a little oh, yeah. bit. And I know. Shifting. My wife is in a lot of homeschool Facebook groups. And she'll just tell me about all these new members coming in, new comments, new questions, so much new stuff going on. Yeah. And we haven't always homeschooled. Um, Jenny is the uh, the what mater familias of uh, of homeschooling. I don't know. Latin family. <laughs> homeschool families all know Latin, right? No. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, Jenny. Um. So. I'm not sure. You threw me with the Latin there. <laughs> now what do I say? Um, we started homeschooling with our oldest. She was. Um, she went through school through fourth grade. So we didn't teach Jessica to read. 
but we started in fifth grade with Jessica. We had wanted to homeschool for several years um, and just held off because I am notoriously inconsistent with just about everything and I can get real excited about some things and want to dive deep into it and then lose steam and, and lose my way. So my husband, who knows me really well, kind of just held us back for a little while. And um, so Jessica was in fifth grade and we've been doing it ever since. And those first couple of years that we homeschooled every year, I said, Jessica is such a smart kid. If I mess this up, we'll just put her back <laughs> in school and she'll catch up and it won't be a big deal. So we did not go into this thinking that we were going to homeschool. And this would have for been in, this would have been in the 80s, right? So um, maybe 90, late 90s. Yeah. yeah. 93. So, no, actually yeah, that, 90, 95. Okay. So Yeah. The internet was not no. a tool that was to be used back then. Homeschooling no. has has come a long way as far as resources, yes. community, and ability to share resources. Now, back in the dark ages before mm -hmm. internet, you know, homeschooling was an extra tough chore. Yes. So tell me how you got started in this. What kind of uh, resources, what shoulders did you have to lean on during those early days? So our first year homeschooling, I grew up in public school system. And so that's really all that I knew about education was what that would look like. And so I wanted to set up a desk for Jessica, a desk for me, have our pile books, have our supplies and things like that, and just replicate what's done in school at home. Um, that was a little bit hard to do because I had a newborn baby too. So my ideal was off from the very beginning. <laughs> but that first year, I wasn't sure how to choose curriculum. I wasn't sure what we wanted to do and I wanted to do it right. So our first year we chose a program that was, um, it was all correspondence. We were sent a huge box of books and then, um, and their schedule of how to implement it. Probably similar to what a lot of people are doing with virtual school right now. Yeah. So we followed somebody else's plan and, um, and sent all of our work all of Jessica's work back in at, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, and, you know, things like that. So that was our first year. Okay. And it worked really well for that first year because it left me the room to explore other ideas and what we might want to do if we had the freedom to do it, which, of course, we did, but it took a little while to, to feel that and know right. that and own that and enjoy it. You know, to begin with, you are covered up with so many expectations and responsibilities and and you don't enjoy it so much so we explored some different things in the next year we we didn't use that correspondence course even though i really enjoyed their books and liked their books and we've used their materials still through the years on and off um, the next year we went with another textbook type approach and and kind of a canned curriculum again but every year after that we've just expanded and done different things since then and and every year has been different we've never done the same thing twice um, for any of the kids and it's just a journey of growth because I think you have to realize you are not teaching a textbook you are not teaching a curriculum you're teaching a child you are, you are bringing that child into a world that they can grow and they can learn at their own pace and their individuals, and you meet them where they're at. And then you figure out, what can I give them to help bring them further along? Absolutely. So tell me, or tell them, tell us all, because we all need to learn something here. How has it changed over this, what you said, 27 years of homeschooling? This is our 26th year. 26th yeah. year of homeschooling. Uh, and the age range of your kids is what, 35? Yes, 35 is the oldest, and then the youngest is 11. Th from 35 to 11, from 1995 to 2020, how has it changed? You, you briefly mentioned going from you know, kind of a set curriculum the first few years, then try to piece things together, customizing yeah. it to the child. So how has is, how is all these years of learning and learning your kids, yeah. I guess that's one of the big things. But anyway, yeah. 
going from 26 years of homeschooling, how have things changed in all that time? Well, we mentioned the internet earlier, but yes, go ahead and internet. elaborate. Yeah, the internet is a, is a wealth of information. Um, sometimes it can be a, a crutch, sometimes it can be too much information, and you feel overwhelmed. For anybody that would be coming into it right now, um, my best advice to them would be to connect with somebody that's homeschooled for a while and put blinders on and not search the internet for a whole lot because it is so overwhelming. Figure out your child's learning style, figure out your learning style, and then you know, look for a way to combine those things together and journey together. You don't have to, as a parent, you don't have to know everything. Um, what you want to do is instill if your child has been in school for a while, I feel like they're probably tired of the textbook, the getting up at a certain time, the routine of it. Not every child is like that. Some kids love it. When I, you know, I grew up in public school and I loved the school setting in my grade school years. I loved it. I was that kid that had all my supplies and, you know, the teacher's pet with my hand up the first question and, you know, I loved it. So not all kids, you know, crumble under a classroom setting but for the most part if your kids are older and they've been in school for a while they would really benefit from a break from that and just set that aside for a little bit and and build relationship you know figure out what your kid loves and and go there with them you know invest some time in what they want to be invested in and and get to know your child because that's the important thing textbooks change Subjects change, but relationship is important and it's foundational. And we can't teach anything of lasting value if we don't have relationship. Absolutely. And, and that's what it's all about. It's not a condemnation of other systems no. of education. It's a, hey, I was convicted by God to do this and I believe it's right for my family. Yes. Am I correct? Yes, and that is yeah. correct. Yeah. So... Tell me right now, how many kids do you have that you're homeschooling right now? And how are things going with them? What, maybe some, some curriculum that you use. I know you piece your curriculum together, but mm -hmm. something, some things that maybe you've liked mm -hmm. and that have stood out to you throughout the years mm -hmm. and about the, the kids now, how they're doing. Well, we still have three that we're homeschooling. And the oldest of those three is a senior this year. So we are trying to finish up, wrap up loose ends, you know, pour that last little bit of ourselves into, into who she is and what we hope for her future and help her be ready for college because that's the next step for her. Um, and then there is sixth grade and fifth grade. And so two, our two youngest children are less than a year apart. So some things we're able to do together and then, um, but the older that they get, the less that we can do together because, you know, they don't want to do it together. <laughs> oh, yeah. It would make it easier for me, some things, if they would do it together, but they don't want to and it doesn't work too good. So um, some of the things that I'm really, I have a new program that I'm using this year that I've never used before. I've followed this lady and, and her curriculum um, for a while but we jumped into it this year and it's it's called brave writer and it is a um it's a language arts curriculum and it really walks you through some of the processes of learning grammar and writing and sentence structure and things like that essays and and things like that just and on the level of your child so you could use the same program um for the younger kids and for high school too oh, okay so it's it's a broad curriculum and it just takes you where they need to go in it. But it is, I really am enjoying it. And it uses real books. We, we read aloud. We do, we do a lot of read alouds. We love read alouds. And everybody loves to read. So um, that is a good thing. And it takes a real book. And then you just break it apart as you, oh. as you go through it. So that um, Brave Writer is, is one thing that I'm using this year that I really love. Um, I would like to have more time with it. Our school year has been really scattered. We've done traveling this year. So I feel like 
um, you know, there's different concepts in, in homeschooling, different categories of homeschoolers. And this is a year that I've felt more like an unschooler than anything <laughs> at all because we're hey, just... For those who don't know what unschooling <laughs> is, will you give just a brief definition of what unschooling is? Well, unschooling is a concept that your child um, drives what education takes place, what their interests are, um, and they, you know, they they go as deep into a topic or subject as they want to, and and it's a child driven philosophy. I think of it as like kind of like vocational school for homeschooling. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go to a vocational school, you have that interest that you're going to pursue there. Yeah. And it's kind of the same thing. Is yeah, it, and is it's that very relaxed. I okay. think so, yeah, and it's very relaxed. And for some, it can look very scattered, and you would think there is no education taking place <laughs> at all in that home. And our home looks like that some days. But, um, you know, our kids are learning and growing all the time. And I think this is another thing with homeschooling is, um, is we think at that school age, that's when education starts and we send our kids off to school or we make the choice to homeschool, but we forget or don't even think about it. We have been educating our children since they've been born. It was us who taught them to, to eat, to sleep, to walk, to talk, everything. And, and in homeschooling, we're just continuing that journey. Sometimes we use textbooks and sometimes we use real life situations. Yeah, and absolutely. And God has commanded us to teach our children. Mm -hmm. And how we do that is on the conscience of each individual parent. Yes. Some parents are convicted that they need to homeschool their kids. Some parents are convicted that their kids should go to a private Christian school. Some parents are convicted that their kids should go to a public school. Mm -hmm. And all that is still that the parent is the one who is in charge of the education of their kid, right? Yes, it's our parents. It's our responsibility as parents to choose how our children will be educated. And it, the important thing is, is that we make the choice and that they are being educated. Um, I think that it's very irresponsible to, to um, rely on somebody else completely and trust somebody else's um, jurisdiction. I think it's very irresponsible to maybe just bring our kids home and then not do anything. We never, you know, homeschooling this many years, we've met lots of different homeschool people, families, and we never, ever, ever advocate doing nothing. Yeah. You know, it is, and I think that sometimes people think of homeschooling as you, you see this family and their kids are outside playing at 10 o'clock in the morning. What's that about? <laughs> you know, are they really doing anything educational over there? And, you know, we would never, ever advocate for a family not educating their children. Right. Homeschooling is not not educating. Oh, yeah, Even absolutely. if it's under the umbrella of unschooling, right. that is not the same thing as not educating. Yeah, it's... Uh, I can't put it any better than you just put it. Um, before we close, I do want to ask you, you briefly touched on this with your homeschooling and traveling, mm -hmm. but specifically regarding being missionaries, being on the mission field, having to do a lot of travel related to Compassionate Hope and Phillips Family Ministries, how has the world of homeschooling benefited or hindered, if at all, your ability to serve the Lord through Phillips Family Ministries. So can you talk about that a little bit? I feel such a freedom in being able to homeschool, continue what we're doing, to educate and train and bring up our children and bring them right alongside of us in every area of our lives. You know, they're right with us. It's not like we do ministry and leave our kids at home or you know, my husband goes to the office and does ministry and, and we're left behind as a family. Together as a family, we are on this journey and together we're growing in the Lord. Together we're doing these things. Sometimes we're bringing books along and, and doing it in a coffee shop along the way or, you know, reading in the vehicle during a break or something like that or plugging into Wi-Fi at McDonald's, you know. 
whatever that it takes, we know what we have to do and, and we have that freedom to be able to do it. So that's what I feel the most blessed in is that we have the freedom. Sometimes it's a little overwhelming to try to navigate and prepare ahead of time. How are we going to do this or that? You know, sometimes that gets a little overwhelming, but most of the time I feel just a peace and a freedom and it's good. Um, we are getting ready. We're making some plans for our trip, our next trip to Asia. And so um, that is interesting to think about. It'll still be part of the traditional school year. So a lot of what we do on that trip will be them absorbing the culture that they're being exposed to. And then hopefully we'll be doing a lot of writing and things like that. Maddie and Tyler even, I'm hoping to do some kind of a blog of sorts. Yeah. And so they'll be able to process some of the things that they're learning. And it's not going to be so much of, you know, grammar worksheets, but, um, but it'll be absorbing real life. And that's what we really want is our children to absorb and take in real life situations and, and use them to build who they are and become more aware of where they're going in their faith journey. Absolutely. I think, I think that was very well put. Um, I think this session, we'll go ahead and wrap up with that. I don't think there's a better way to do that. Um, I do want to read one verse. You may know where we're going. We've been talking about homeschool in Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. That is our commission as parents, to train up our children in the way they should go, in the way of the Lord, and that all things come back to the Lord. Math is math because God designed an orderly universe. Geography is ge geography because he created this place the way that he did. Mm -hmm. Everything comes back to the Lord, right? Yes, oh yeah. Amen. So let's close in prayer. Father, you are so good to us. Thank you for Jenny teaching us about homeschooling and how it has affected her family and her ministry. I ask that you would be with her as she continues training up the next generation of missionaries in her home. May you be glorified through Philip's family ministries. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, thanks for joining us. Uh, be sure to click like, share, and to subscribe to this channel. Um, visit philipsfamilyministries.com for more information on how you can partner and hold the rope for our missionaries, Daniel and Jenny Phillips, phillipsfamilyministries.com. Thanks, have a great day.